Zeit der Reformationszeit. Ja, das war die. Das äh, war, also es gab schon die äh, latein ja. Die latein schule die ja. war direkt neben der äh, Georgenkirche gewesen. Ja. Und Jan, äh, Martin Luther ist auf diese Schule gegangen, die noch direkt neben der Georgenkirche war, in dem Gebäude. Und dann ist die Schule, als das Kloster säkularisiert worden ist, ja. nach Einführung der Reformation, ist dann die Schule umgezogen hierher. Stein für Stein? Nein, nein, jetzt zu Rüdi. Also die Schule verlegt worden hierher, ja. äh, sodass also zwar... Martin Luther in dieselbe Schule gegangen ist wie Johann Sebastian Bach in die Lateinschule, aber nicht in dasselbe Gebäude. Johann Sebastian Bach ist dann hier in dieses Gebäude gegangen. Meinen Sie, es war genauso ruhig in Bachzeit? Na, ich weiß nicht. Also für Johann Sebastian Bach vielleicht, denn er hat ja sehr oft die Schule ja, entweder geschwänzt oder er war... Er, er war wissen ja, wir, war er fleißig? War er, äh, also er war hier ein mittelmäßiger, äh, ein, ein, also im guten Mittelmaß, nicht im negativen Sinne, im guten Mittelmaß ein Schüler gewesen. Und er war dann in Ohrdruf einer von den Besten gewesen, denn das wissen wir. Und er, er, er hat viele... Äh, Tage gefehlt und man weiß nicht, warum er gefehlt hat. Oh, probably because he was making music. He missed several days' work because he was probably with his uncle in the church in the Georgian Kirche, ja. singing or learning to play the organ or ja, oder bei seinem Vater. Or with his father, nicht, yes, who was the Ambrosius, star pfeifer. Ja, der hat ja auch viel Musik gemacht und da sind die wahrscheinlich auch oft dann äh, die äh, Lehrlinge gewesen, denen er dann das Blasen beigebracht hat und da kann man sich vorstellen, dass der kleine Johann Sebastian wie so etwa dann ja. schon mit zugehört hat. John Elliot Gardner takes advantage of a short break between concerts in Eisenach to do a little on-the-spot investigation. It was here in the year 1685 that Johann Sebastian Bach was born. The British conductor got it into his head to perform the entire corpus of Johann Sebastian Bach's known cantatas during the Jubilee year 2000. That's over 80 concerts featuring 200 cantatas in only 12 months. All the cantatas are to be performed on the Sundays and religious festivals for which Bach originally wrote them. John Elliott Gardner calls it the Bach Cantata Pilgrimage. Many concerts will be performed in places in Saxony and Thuringia where Bach used to live. For Gardner, a very personal quest on the trail of Bach himself. Together with his wife, Isabella, John Elliot Gardner visits a small village church in Dornheim, near Arnstadt. Here, on October the 17th, 1707, Johann Sebastian Bach married his cousin, Maria Barbara. The little church has been lovingly and painstakingly restored by a local association and readied for the festivities marking the 250th anniversary of Bach's death. The head of the local association proudly displays the church register of the day, recording the marriage of the organist in Mühlhausen to the virtuous maiden. Bach's joyful wedding quadlibet was written during this period, a collection of songs with humorous allusions to several Bach family members. Still following Bach's trail, John Elliot Gardner's Bach Cantata pilgrimage will take him, the Monteverdi Choir, and the English Baroque soloists to over 50 churches and monasteries. They're endorsing the original designation of the church cantata as sacral music.
Against the devilish disorder of noise, Gardner wanted to set the heavenly order of Bach's music. A high point of the pilgrimage is Leipzig. Naturally, a visit to the Church of St. Thomas is scheduled. Bach worked here for over 25 years, from 1723 until his death in 1750. St. Thomas's church is still a building site, as its former glory is restored for the 250th anniversary of the death of its most famous cantor. No entrance. I'm sorry. Another broken rule. Restoration work has been in process since 1997 and will cost a total of 23 million marks for a new roof, a new gallery, new windows and, above all, a new organ. How fascinating. This must be the new organ they're building here. That's the bit that worries me, that bit over there, because that's the gallery where he worked. But it looks... It looks totally 19th century Victorian. It's sort of already got the sort of heavy patina of the 19th century and the sort of... You almost feel that the sort of holy fifth evangelist is, is doing his work up there. I mean, this, this church must have looked completely differently in... Uh, in Bach's day. Not only the organs, but the size of the gallery, the whole furniture, the whole feel of the place must have been different. The new organ is being built in the church gallery against a fast approaching deadline. Here, John Elliott Gardner meets Ulrich Böhme, current organist at St. Thomas's. Two Bach experts discuss things together. Is this an authentic organ or is this, is this an... Also diese Orgel, Sie sehen ja leider, gucken Sie mal hier hoch, ja. Ja. so ein bisschen ahnt man da, was da wird, ja. Das ist also vom Gehäuseentwurf, sieht ja. so modern aus, ja. aber sie hat ein historisches Vorbild, und zwar die Scheibeorgel der Paulinerkirche, die Kirche. Bach geprüft hat, ja, ja. die dient diesem Entwurf als Vorbild. Ja, ja. Also man sieht die, wer, wer diese Zeichnung kennt. Und das existiert immer noch heute? Was denn? Die Paulinerkirche. Nein, die, die hat doch Ulbricht sprengen lassen, die, diese Ach Kirche. So. Die Orgel ist schon im letzten Jahr letzten über Jahrhundert weggekommen. weggekommen. Ach so. Aber die Kirche ist, ist ja 68 leider gesprengt worden. Ja. Und das ist die Orgel, die Bach im Bau erlebt hat, als er ein Kind war. In Eisenach, in Eisenach. Die, Orgel. Ja, ja. In die Disposition ist von Johann Christoph Bach. Mhm. Und die wird genauso gebaut. Das ist Sein das Onkel. Brustwerk, der Onkel hat das gemacht. Mhm. Und das ist eine geniale Disposition. Die, ja. also, also alles, was man sich wünscht als Organist, ist dann da. Und und sowas von, von kreativ, also viel besser als, als die ganzen anderen Dispositionen, die man sonst so nach den Regeln kennt. Die ist ganz unregelmäßig und so besonders spannend. Also Sie meinen, er wird damit sehr zufrieden? Ja, Bach, ja, da, Bach hat in seinen späteren Im Traum. Gutachten, Bach hat in seinen späteren Gutachten immer wieder Register haben wollen, ja. die in dieser Orgel, dieser Eisenacher Orgel da waren. Also beispielsweise und das hat die Posaune 32 Fuß wollte er immer haben. Das ja. hatte sie. Das Vergott 16 Fuß ja. in der Musik, so delikat, ja? Ja, ja, ja. Das, das ist da drin gewesen. Ja. Äh, zwei große, große Manuale, die das Plenum ausmachen, Hauptwerk und ja. Oberwerk und ein Echowerk hier. Also da ist an Farben alles, was das Herz begehrt. Es ist auch, Sie sehen hier, die Registermechanik ist nicht, nicht das ist alles rein mechanisch, aber nicht, nicht im historischen Sinn gebaut, ja. sondern in den... Platzverhältnissen, die hier möglich sind, in diesem schmalen Band wird die gesamte... Ja, Sie haben nicht sehr viel Platz. Sieht man also diese unglaublich großen Becher. Ach, das ist... 9,60 Meter, das größte Ton. Fantastisch. Ja, das das Töne geben. Das, das war auch das Erste, was aufgebaut werden musste. Das ja. so die technischen Sachen, die Windladen, das ist als Eiche, weil das ja. sehr stabil ist. Look at the size of these pipes, that's incredible. Beautifully made. All from Spruce. Hier werden dann die anderen Basspfeifen sein, yeah. links und rechts. Und sehr schön oben präsent das Hauptwerk und das Oberwerk. Das, wird also, das sieht man jetzt schon, wie gut das im Raum klingen muss. Und wann soll es fertig sein? Im Sommer. Ja. Gut. Ja. <lacht> Courage. Brilliant. Brilliant enterprise.
Gardner's visit is not entirely altruistic. He'll be returning here in October when the sounds of the cantatas for the 18th Sunday after Trinity will ring out in the newly refurbished Church of St. Thomas's. Yeah, we, we are in, the, in, the, in, in, the in the Thomaskirche. Hoffentlich. Do you know, the most extraordinary thing is still, when you think, when you go into a church like the Thomaskirche, and when you think that Bach is probably, with Beethoven and Mozart and Handel, the most celebrated name of any composer that we've ever had in our last uh, three, four hundred years. Um, and every household knows his name. And yet, 50% of his work consists of the church cantatas, and just a handful of those are known. So we're actually discovering 50% of, of the most famous composer that's ever lived. That's extraordinary. I can never get over that, really. <laughs> I sometimes get the feeling when I come to Leipzig that Bach made a wrong turning, that it was a bad career move for him. Of course, if he'd gone somewhere like Hamburg or to Dresden, where he would have liked to have gone, we would have been all the richer for lots of wonderful Italian operas. We might have had 18 or 20 fantastic Italian operas and they might have changed the whole course of, of Italian opera. In fact, Mozart might have written completely differently had Bach written those operas. And we shouldn't complain, for heaven's sake, because in, in return, what we do have is this extraordinary corpus of cantatas and the St. Matthew Passion, the St. John Passion, the Magnificat, the Christmas Oratorio, all these magnificent choral works, which in his own day were not regarded as the object of veneration. They became venerated in the course of the 19th century, but they really weren't venerated in his own day. In fact, in Forkel, in his first biography of, of Bach, hardly really touches on the vocal pieces. Bach is celebrated in, uh, as a teacher, as an organist, as a performer above all, but not really as the composer of cantatas. Gardner receives a tip. Only a few kilometers from Leipzig, there's a very special church, the fortified Church of Pomsen. In Pomsen itself, people seem somewhat surprised at the interest shown by outsiders. The old priest, he was very skeptical. He said, why do you want to see my church? He said, uh, there's only my wife who plays the organ and one other member of the congregation, that's all it is. Inside the church, time seems to have stood still. The interior of the fortified church has obviously not been renovated for hundreds of years. You can almost reach out and touch history. But you see, what's great about this place is that it's never been restored. Well, it doesn't look as if it has. I mean, this must have been like this, certainly in Bach's day, if not years and years and years before. Guten Tag. Wir versuchen Ihre Kirche nochmal. Das ist schön, ja. Das ist schön. Und was wissen wir jetzt über Bachs Besuch hier in 1727, als er seine Kantate... Ja, Bach hat ja die Kantate für den Tod, ja. für die Beerdigung, Beerdigung. des Herrn von Ponikau geschrieben, die ja. 157, ich lasse dich nicht, ja. du singst mich denn. Ob er sie selber hier aufgeführt hat, wissen wir nicht. 
dass dieser Orgel zu seinem Inspektionsbereich gehört hat, wissen wir und er ist ganz sicher hier gewesen. Irgendwo, ich kann jetzt nicht sagen, wo steht diese Äußerung von ihm, dass er sich beklagt, die Orgelempore in Pomps ist so klein, dass man wenig Instrumente aufstellen kann. Also, also muss er sie schon gekannt haben. Ja. Aber im Sterberegister von Pomsi, wo die Beerdigung von dem Ponikau sehr ausführlich beschrieben ist, ja. steht nichts dabei, das dass passt. Bach mit hier gewesen wäre. Ach so. Es kann sein, dass er schon Präfekten hat sich vertreten lassen. Wiewohl ich denke, dass solche Auftragsarbeiten für ihn auch finanziell, finanziell interessant waren. Sicher. Natürlich. Sicher. Ja. Es wäre natürlich fast eine Reliquie, wenn in dem Sterberegister stand, ja. die feierliche Musik leitete der Leipziger Thomas Kanter. Ja. Leider steht sie eben nicht drin. Ja, ja, ja. So the fortified church at Pomsen remains a beautiful little church on the fringes of time and bypassed by the festivities honoring the cantor of St. Thomas's. But the real jewel in the Pomsen village church is its organ. That was not the Bach's time. The Handgriff had not been done. That's crazy. That's crazy. Ja, der, der müsste eigentlich gehen, obwohl der eine Zinke hey. ist. Oh, how sweet. Ist das wunderbar? In welchem Jahr war, war dieses Orgel gebaut? Also eingebaut ja? hier mhm. ist sie 1671. Aber ein ganzes Stück älter ist sie. Es ist eine reine Renaissance-Orgel, etwa vom Anfang des... 16. Jahrhunderts oder Mitte 16. Jahrhunderts. Also wir wissen nicht, wo die Orgel herstammt. Wir wissen auch nicht, wer sie gebaut hat. The Pomsen organ is the oldest playable organ in Saxony. An opportunity the organist of the English Baroque soloists is naturally unlikely to pass up. Bach was really the, the, the victim of um, uh, a political piece of infighting. There were two parties here in Leipzig. You had the absolutist court party representing the elector who lived in Dresden, and uh, you had then the uh, estates city party uh, who ruled here uh, quasi-independently of the elector. And yet each was dependent, each party was dependent on each, on each other for taxation, for the well regulation of society, for governance, as it were. And uh, at the point when Bach was appointed, there seems to have been some not very salubrious deal struck between the two parties, whereby um, the majority party, the absolutist party, had the right to choose the cantor, and whereby the estates party, the minority city party, got to write the contract so that Bach was in an intolerable position because he was the nominee, and not even the first nominee, he was the third nominee of the court party, of the absolutist party, but his contract was written and he was then sort of hemmed in by all the sort of um, constraints and uh, frustrations of working for a basically an uncivilized and un unsympathetic city party.
he was in charge of four different institutions, church institutions here in the services in the city. Um, and he, with his first choir, he was responsible for, for performing the uh, cantato or the, the, the piece, the, the, the Kirchenstück that was done in the main service every Sunday. But his second choir had to be in the other church, whether it was, if, if he was performing in Nikolai, then he had to be in, the other choir had to be in the Thomas, and so on, alternating, uh, singing motets and, and making sure that the uh, service was properly illustrated with music. And then there was the Paulina Kirche and there was the Neue Kirche, and they were the, the lesser, the one was the university the church and the other was the, the Neue Kirche, where the less um, um, talented members of his, uh, his choir and orchestra uh, were performing. And the, the sheer organization of that must have been a, a nightmare to him. The Bach Cantata pilgrimage also poses a huge organizational challenge. It's an undertaking of incredibly complex logistics. But regardless of the problems attendant upon an odyssey of this nature, there is a single crucial issue for Gardner top artistic performance standards and musical perfection worthy of Bach's masterpieces. Um, Everett, there's a bit of adjustment to do in the in the in, the, the, mix, in the balance. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. No, there's uh, the bassoon was also. And there's a, so. there's an unfortunate bassoon thing there, but you could repair it from the identical place which is there. Yeah. But nothing else. Yes. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. The bass. Oh, the basis is very good. You are. And for the rest, just put some things together, you know. Yep. Yeah, and leave it as it is. Leave it as it is. Great. That's what I like to hear. Exactly. <laughs> Week after week, new cantatas, concerts, and recording dates. Bach, too, had little time to take a break in his daily life. If you imagine every week um, must have begun with the composition itself, and if that wasn't uh, mind-boggling and, and, and challenging enough, then came the necessity of copying out the parts. And within the sort of home craft um, facilities of, of the Bach household, that's in, in lieu of a Xerox copier, there they were copying, presumably. And then came the rehearsals, first of all of the boys, then of the, of the uh, instrumentalists, and then putting it all together at a general rehearsal on the Saturday. And then at a godforsaken hour at seven o'clock on the Sunday morning, having to pitch up here in unheated church um, and to sit probably before breakfast while the service took its time, and eventually, just before the sermon, you would get to perform. Uh, what the state of the performance was, the mind boggles to think, you know, whether he really had sufficient forces or whether the quality was there or whether the interest was there. And the one thing is absolutely certain, we have absolutely no record of Bach's congregation uh, ever giving him any encouragement or of, of giving any positive approbation or any sign that they had the slightest inkling of the quality of the music they were hearing. 